fact, I'm going to start with a story called Rochester and the Alien Zoo. And let's see what you think. Have some of you heard this story before? Okay. Well, when I was a young man, I used to take my dog, Rochester, and Rochester was a big black dog. He was a cross between a German Shepherd and a Labrador. And he was about 90 pounds, this tall. He had a great big tail that was about this thick and about this long. He and I were good friends. And he, we used to go out to the west side of Albuquerque before there was a bunch of houses out there. As a matter of fact, there was no Rio Rancho then. It was just all desert. And the desert went straight to the sand dunes. And the sand dunes looked over Mount Taylor and this valley, and you could see arroyos and cactuses. And you know how lucky we are to live in New Mexico because you can see for miles and miles and miles. And luckily, the sand dunes, when you stood on them, you were facing west. So I used to go and watch the sunset. Aren't we lucky here in New Mexico because we have beautiful sunsets? And I used to love to go watch the red and green and blue and purple and all the colors that came out during the sunset. So one day, Rochester and I were sitting up there. And as usual, Rochester went running down into the valley toward Mount Taylor. And usually he would run, folks. He would run and he would get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Then when he was almost so small I couldn't see him, I would stand up at the top of the sand dunes and I would call, Rochester! And he would turn around and he'd come running back. Just so fast. And he'd come running right up to me. And he'd slobber on me and jump up on me and I'd pet him and it was wonderful. One day, we would go out to the sand dunes. And Rochester ran down into the valley and became smaller and smaller and smaller. And bing! That little black dot disappeared. Well, this had never happened before. So I called Rochester. <clears throat> he didn't come. Rochester! He didn't come. My dog always came when I called him. I was very worried. So I began to follow his track. And I followed them down the sand dunes, through the arroyos, around cactuses, up little hills. You guys know what it looks like in the desert. And I was trudging along. And suddenly, there was a big arroyo. And down at the bottom of that arroyo was a big saguro cactus. Now back then, I wasn't as smart as I am now. If I'd have been smarter back then, I'd have known that there's no Seguro cactuses in New Mexico. They're in Arizona. But there at the bottom was a big Seguro cactus. So I walked down there, and Rochester's trail stopped right at that cactus. Well, I walked around it, and I gave that cactus a little kick. And a door opened. Well, I got down on my hands and knees, and I looked inside, and sure enough, there was Rochester, and he was laying against the back, and he, I could see his eyes glowing, and he was very afraid. He was like, hmm, hmm, hmm. He was glad to see me. I crawled into that cactus, and I said, Rochester, it's okay. It's okay when, bam, that cactus door shut. Suddenly, Rochester and I were trapped inside a big saguro cactus. The next thing I knew, that cactus started to shake. <laughs> Guys, it wasn't a cactus, it was a rocket ship. The next thing I knew, we were hurtling through space. We were floating around because there was no gravity, and suddenly, bam, the cactus landed. We landed on the floor of the cactus, and the door opened. When I looked outside, there were thousands of little teeny blue guys about this tall. And they all had orange hair about this tall. And they were all carrying little spears and they were going. I said, 
Rochester. I think they want us to go out. And he went. So we walked out of the cactus and stood up and they surrounded me and they started they started pushing me toward a path. And we figured out where they wanted us to walk down this path. So we started walking. And they were all around us, talking about us and saying funny things. I mean, it sounded funny to me. Well, pretty soon we came to a cave. And we walked down into the cave. Down, down, and down, and down. Soon we came to a chamber that was as big as this gymnasium. And at the back side of that chamber, sitting on a huge throne, was a great big blue guy with great big orange hair and a crown on top of it. He was the king. I'm going, Rochester, what is going on? And of course, Rochester went, because he didn't know either. So, 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 he looked at us and he goes, rum, rum. and the little blue guys all pushed us forward. And the king looked at me and Rochester and he pointed and he started laughing. <laughs> he thought we were funny. And I'm going, Ooh. and then he pointed to a door at the back of the chamber, he pushed us to it, opened it, and there was another big chamber. And in that chamber, hanging all over were cages. And in those cages were the strangest creatures you had ever seen. There were little round balls with fur all over it and eyes stuck on it. There were big long tubes with 16 legs and a head at each end. There were little thin things that stood up and had big heads on top of it. They were strange looking creatures. I looked at Rochester and I said, Rochester, I think this is a zoo, an alien zoo, and I think we're the aliens and they're going to put us in there. And Rochester said, Woof! which meant, right, Rick. Mm -hmm. So we went into the, they put us into the cage. Well, I'm worried because I'm thinking, my gosh, I'm going to be late for dinner and my mother gets really, really mad when I'm late for dinner. What am I going to do? I don't want to make my mom mad. Well, those creatures might have been smart enough to turn a Seguro cactus into a rocket ship and send us to an alien zoo, but they weren't smart enough to know that they made the cages out of the same thing that milk bones are made out of for dogs. So Rochester, of course, he walks around wagging his tail, sniffing, because that's what dogs do. And all of a sudden, he looks at me and goes, woof, 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 woof. And then he takes a big bite out of the cage. And he eats a big hole. And I'm going, all right. We jump out of the hole. And we get on a path and we start running. And suddenly, all these little blue guys are chasing us. And they start throwing their spears. Bang, bang. And we're going, ow, ow. They get me in the, that part of my body that's going to turn. And I'm going, ow, ow. I'm running. Pretty soon. I'm really tired. And I go, Rochester, look, there's the light up ahead. There was a light at the end of the tunnel. We're running toward it, and I was so tired. I said, I can't make it. I don't think I can make it. Go ahead, Rochester, save yourself. Then my dog did the bravest thing. Have you ever smelled a dog's breath? No. Pretty bad, eh? Pretty bad. Well, he turns around. These little blue guys start throwing spears. He's got spears sticking in his nose. He opens his mouth and he goes, <sighs> His breath was so bad, all the little blue guys, bang, fell on their backs. Where is he? They went, oh. Suddenly I got up and we ran to the light at the end of the tunnel, jumped out of the cave, ran to the cactus, jumped in, flew home, just in time for dinner. Now, I've always been careful about telling the story to people because just like my mother, sometimes people don't believe my stories. And this, thank you. And that's the story of Rochester in the Alien Zoo.